Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy days to join us for this webinar. My name is Pilar Merino, and I am researcher in Acre Technalia, Institute of Agriculture Development in the Basque Country, Spain. And I am delighted to bring, in to, do, to bring in you today webinar, Use of Rapeseed Cake in Dairy Nutrition, with our presenter, Dr. Garcia. I am very proud to have a chair here next to me, who has been researching on ruminant nutrition, feedstuffs, and livestock production on Acre for 16 years. Recently, Dr. Acer Garcia has led the project Livesit Capital, integral use of oil seeds to reduce greenhouse gases emissions associated with farming activities. This webinar is being delivered as part of the Eurodairy Network, which includes 14 countries from Ireland to Poland and Sweden to Italy. It aims to put farmers at the center of practice-based innovation by sharing knowledge and solutions. You can find out more about Eurodairy by visiting www.eurodairy.eu. Today's seminar has registrations from dairy farmers, vets, nutritionists, consultants and researchers. Acer will run through his presentation, which will take around 25 minutes, and there will be time for comments and questions at the end. You will stay all muted throughout the webinar, but if anyone would like to ask a question, then please type your question into the box on the left-hand side of your screens. I will ask Acer your questions at the end of his presentation. We will aim to finish up within an hour. So, without further delay, I'm delighted to introduce Acer. He graduated for from Faculty of Agronomy of Universidad Pública de Navarra in 2000. He joined NACER in 2001, where since then he has been currently involved in projects focused on livestock cattle nutrition. His understanding of ruminant nutrition is resulting in practical ways for farmers to improve feeding efficiency. So now, as I I'm going to hand over the controls to you here. Good afternoon. Uh, Everyone, uh, thanks Pilar for, for this uh, nice presentation. I, I'd like to thank as well the, the organizing committee of these uh, webinars uh, for letting me show you the, the results obtained in, uh, in this project uh, that deals uh, with the use of oil seeds such as rapeseed to reduce green, greenhouse gases emissions. Now, there we go. Well, uh, what we do uh, once we have harvested the, the oil seed, we, we put it into the press to obtain, on the one hand, uh, the oil that can be used blended with diesel as biofuel, as biofuel fuel in, in farm machinery, and on the other hand, a solid cake that can be used as feed ingredient in ruminant nutrition. It is important to know that for each ton of seed that we put into the press, we obtain more than 300 liters of oil and more than 600 kilograms of cake. We need to take into account that this cake we obtain, uh, let's call it cold press rapeseed cake, is characterized by having an important amount of fat, around 25%, and protein, again, around 20, 20, 25%. Depending on the, on the uh, pressing process, because we, we can use different rotation speeds of, this, of the screw in, inside the press, we can either increase or decrease the concentrations of fat and protein. Anyway, as you can see, this cake has nothing to do with the rapeseed cake you can find in the, in, the, in the market that is characterized by having greater amounts of protein and much lower contents of fat. The reason is that in this project we use cold processing, which implies that there is no further processing of the cake. This means that there is no further chemical ex extraction of the cake. We wanted this uh, project or idea to, to reach the farmer so for this, uh, we had one portable press, and by portable, I mean that we can stick this press in a car and take it to the farmers right away. Therefore, uh, the project worked with two demonstrative actions. The first one was the use of vegetable oils blended with diesel as fuel in farm machinery, and the second one was the use of cold press rapeseed cake as concentrate ingredient to reduce enteric methane emissions. Indeed. There, there was a third one that implied the development of a network of rapeseed producers interested in, in introducing the rapeseed as the first crop in the rotation of cereals. I will not go ahead, get into, in a, into this part in this webinar, but you have all the results available on the web of the, of the project. As I have said before, for each ton of seeds that we, we put in, in the press, we obtain more than 300 liter, liters of oil. 
The idea of this project was to use that oil as biofuel in farm machinery. To use this oil as biofuel, biofuel fuel, we, we have tried different options. A few years ago, for, for instance, we decided to modify the, the engine of our vehicles to in, introduce a secondary tank where the oil would be kept. In this way, we would start the engine with, with uh, conventional diesel because the engine wa was cold. We would use it this way until the engine reached the working temperature, and then we would switch to oil uh, to switch back to the conventional diesel just before turning off, turning off the engine. The new idea of, of the project is to try to stay as simple as possible, and this involves, instead of modifying the engine, modifying the fuel. We decided to blend, blend the oil produced with diesel in different, amounts of, in different amounts or percentages depending on the season of the year. Why depending on the season of the year? Because the oil is not completely burned when the, when the engine is not hot or warm enough, which may lead to deposits in the in, in injectors. So in winter, we began with an oil inclusion, inclusion of 10%, going to 30% in the spring and up to 50% during the summer. But if we ask any farmer if he or she is willing to try this biofuel in the tractor, they will probably ask back if we are sure that this blend will not damage the engine. To try to convince them, we did some uh, lab studies to assess if these blends comply with the, with the fuel re regulations. I have not presented those results here, but you can find them again on the web of, of the project. Anyway, although the blends, blends comply with the, re with the re regulations, these results were not enough to convince the farmers to use the, uh, this net. Well, anyway, who would be? So we decided that the best, the best way to convince anyone to use such blends was with the, with the example. So when they ask, at least I could say, I have already done it. So what, what did we do? We used these blends on our own vehicles, and these are the results we found. The, the green line in the, in, in the figure represents the percentage of oil in the blend, which is on the vertical axis on your right. The red bar is the consumption of diesel, and the, and the blue bar is the consumption of oil. As I have said before, in 2014, we started this demonstration trial in March using a 10% inclusion of oil, but by May, we increased to 30% to go up to 50% in July, where it, was, where it was kept until December. Along this year, total biofuel consumption was 3,610 liters, of which more than 1,000 were pure oil, which resulted in a blend of more than 30%. This action allowed us to reduce the cost of the fuel and to save more than 1,000 euros. We, we ran more than 24,000 kilometers without major mechanical problems. This figure represents the consumption of diesel and oil in 2015. Again, the green line in the figure represents the percentage of oil in the blend, which is on the vertical axis on your right. The red bar is the consumption of diesel and the blue bar is the consumption of oil and is represented on the left vertical axis. In 2015, we reduced the percentage of oil in the blend in February to a 10%, to increase it again in March to a 30%, to reach the 50% in June until September. Then we reduced it to the winter blend. Along this year, total bio biofuel consumption was 4,332 liters, of which more than 1,100 were pure oil, which resulted in a blend of 26%. This action allowed us to reduce the cost of the fuel and to save more than 1,000 euros. We, 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 we ran more, we ran more than uh, 44,000 uh, uh, kilometers without major mechanical problems. Again, this figure represents the consumption of diesel and oil. In 2016, we maintained the winter blend until March when we began to use the spring blend until July, when we used the summer blend until the end of the demonstration activity. Along this year, total biofuel consumption was 3,323 3, 3, liters, of which more than 600 were pure oil, which resulted in a blend of 19%. This action allowed us to reduce the cost of the fuel and to save more than 600 euros. We run more than 20,000 uh, kilometers without major mechanical problems. In this figure, 
you can see the cumulated consumption of, of fuel achieved during the whole demonstration action. Again, in red and blue, you can see the diesel and alcohol oil consumption represented on the left vertical axis. And the percentage of oil in the blend in the green triangle represented on the right hand side vertical axis. As you can see, uh, along the whole action, the total biofuel consumption was more than 11,000 liters, of which almost 3,000 were pure oil, which resulted in a blend of 20, 25%. This action allowed us to reduce the cost of the fuel and to save more than 2,800 euros. We ran more than 89,000 kilometers without major mechanical problems. Note that all vehicles pass at, passed at least one mechanical inspection annually. I will show you the results of these mechanical inspections late, late, later on. In this figure, you can see in blue the tons of CO2 equivalents emitted by the vehicles using the blend, and in red, those that would have been emitted if the vehicles used, used conv conventional diesel. As you can see, throughout the whole demonstration activity, the vehicles using the blend emitted a little more than 27 tons of CO2 equivalents. Facing this situation, it, if the fuel used had been conventional diesel, more than 34 tons would have been emitted, representing a decrease of more than 25%. Gathering up all the results found so far, it could be said that using the blend of diesel allows us to reduce the cost of the fuel and the emissions associated with its use. I will show you now the major mechanical problems found during the uh, mechanical inspections. This figure belongs to one of the vehicles used, and we took it to the uh, mechanical inspection because we detected that the vehicle was emitting a high amount of particle, particles. The mechanical inspection looked at the injectors and the filters. The main problems were found in the, in the in injectors and the filters and were the result of an incomplete combustion of the oil in the chamber, which led to a higher wear of the in injector. The mechanical conclusion was that the observed greater emissions could be, could be associated with the, with the air filter. It was, it was not studied because the air system could not possibly be affected by the type of fuel used. Okay, another problem we had to face, but this time it was not in the cars, but in our pumping station that you can see on the picture. Our pumping station consisted of three deposits. One stored the oil, another one stored uh, diesel, and the third a, a blend of 10%. We found the problem in the pipe that was taking the fuel from the container storing the blend to the pump. This was somehow striking because the other pipes were okay. We took a sample of the residue in, in the pipe and we had it analyzed, and we found that the residue was a swap from the reaction of the biofuel with zinc coatings. The question that arise, ar arises here is, why only with the blend and not with the pure oil? What, what, what happens really with the blends? To try to answer these questions, we ran a trial in which we stored blends for eight months under different conditions, outdoors, or at constant temperatures, 5 or 20 uh, de degrees centigrade. We found that blends stored for 8 months at either 5 or 20 degrees kept their properties. But blends stored outdoors for the same period of time degraded completely. Finally, the degradation of the blends stored outside was much higher than that observed for pure oil. So the take-home idea is try to locate the tank inside the warehouse to avoid variations in temperature. And second, store oil instead of blends and, and do the blending if possible when you intend to use it. In another one of the mechanical revisions, we found that one of the filters, the coating of the filter uh, specifically was de degraded. When we analyzed it, again, it, it was made of zinc. So the chemical nature of the oil is different from that of the conventional diesel. Therefore, its interaction with materials can be different. So here, it was clear to us that we had to analyze all the materials that could get in touch with the blend. 
to do so, to do so we studied the compatibility of the materials with the fuel system of a truckster. So what did we do? We took all the parts of the fuel system that could get in touch with the blend and store them with the blend and analyze them. We took uh, or selected this tractor because according to our records, it is the most common one in our region. This was an important, important part of the project and I will only show you the results we found. Anyway, a more detailed report on the obtained results can be found on the web of the project. We found in this structure in particular that materials will, will not be affected differently by a fuel which is a blend or conventional diesel. Going into details, we observed that metals performed correctly, but we found that the first layers were affected. But this phenomenon was also observed with conventional diesel. In terms of polymeric materials, we found that the variations in mechanical properties and dimensional stability are either not significant or acceptable by being similar or less than those suffered by the same materials in, con in contact with this. So the conclusion is that for this structure, it cannot be said that the blends in which different metals and polymers have been tested are not suitable for use as fuel for internal combustion engines. But it must, it must kept in mind that under certain conditions, similar to what happens with diesel, they may cause surface damage to parts in the fuel system. Anyway, these are just the conclusions, conclusions of the study. Like I said before, a more detailed report can be found on the web. Again, these are the filters we had to replace in a mechanical inspection. We took a sample of the remains and had, had them analyzed to find that they were remains of the blend used. Again, the combustion is the key parameter to, to avoid problems. If you can assure a fine combustion of the blend, the problems that you may possibly encounter will be reduced. So, gathering up all the results found so far, it could be said that using the blend of diesel means an important reduction in gases emissions along, along with financial savings that range between 26 and 28 percent. By contrast, any mechanical problems found would be limited to the appearance in specific cases of swaps from the reaction of biofuel, biofuel with zinc coatings. Now, I am going to show you the results we found when we used the rapeseed cake in ruminant feeding. First, we used them in their use. Well, why first with their use? Well, because the use were mine, and as a consequence, I could assume the consequences of a wrong nutritional decision. But when you speak with a professional farmer and you explain him the idea, he would normally say, that, yeah, it is interesting, but you can, can you assure me that my meal yields will not be compromised? Therefore, we formulated the rapeseed cake in the concentrate because we wanted to reduce methane emissions. But I think it is clear to all of us that this methane emission reduction needs, needs to be achieved without impairing milk yields and quality and maintaining consumer acceptability. Bear in mind that dairy you milk can be used to produce high quality cheese or curds and that the acceptability of the final product cannot be compromised. Like I said before, the use we use belongs to the experimental flock of nature. So I could really propose a complete replacement of soybean and palm fat by rapeseed cake. Remember that this cold pressed rapeseed cake is characterized by having important amounts of fat and protein. In this table, you can see the chemical analysis of the concentrates. As you can see, the concentrates were formulated to provide equal amounts of crude protein, fat, and energy. As you can see, the amount of fat is high for a concentrate, concentrate and it is merely within the limits to be able to have, to have it in a pellet form. And last but not least, the concentrate price was reduced by 30%. We used their use at the beginning of lactation. Why at the beginning of lactation? Because this is the period when the requir requirements are highest, so that if I can fully replace soybean and palm without impairing milk yields, milk yields at this moment, 
I would think that I could replace them at any other moment because the productive requirements are not as high as at the beginning of lactation. Okay, what do, what do we see? In this figure, you can see the methane emissions. We have served a very small reduction in methane emissions with the concentrate formulated with, formulated with rapeseed compared with control. I will not get into details, but we did not observe a modification of the fermentation pattern in the rumen. Looking at the productive per performance, we found an, a slight increase in milk production. I would like to draw your attention to the fact that we were able to maintain daily yields of two and a half liters per day per head, which is a very important production for, for latchader use. This productive results or result is important because the reduction in methane emission is magnified when the comparison is made at the level of methane emissions in relation to the final product of, obtained. On the contrary, we found a reduction of milk fat greater than 10%. This is not an interesting result because the concentration of, of fat is used to pay milk. Finally, we, we also found a, a, a slight increase in the protein concentration of milk. So, so far, we have seen a very slight re reduction in methane emissions with an increase in milk production, maintaining protein contents, and all this with a concentrate that is much cheaper. In this figure, you can see the milk fatty acid profile. Again, in green, you can see the effect of feeding rapeseed, and in orange, the control diet. As you can see, an important shift in the fatty acid profile of milk was observed. Feeding rapeseed resulted in a reduction of the saturation of the milk concomitant with an increase in both mono and poly and saturated fatty acids. These results could be expected because in the formulation of the control concentrate, hydrogenated palm fat was used. The implications of these results are relevant from the point of view of human health because a number of studies have shown that the intake of mono and saturated fat leads to lower cholesterol levels and a lower risk of cardio, cardio, cardiovascular disease. We also found an important increase on the concentration of CLA in milk. So far, feeding rapeseed cake reduced methane emissions, increased milk production, and improved milk quality. But all this would be worth nothing if the final product is re re rejected. Therefore, we perform a consumer accept acceptance trial. With the milk produced, we did curds, which is a typical product in Spain. As you can see in this figure, the end consumer appreciates the curds produced, not being able to detect any problems in terms of taste, appearance, or smell. So again, this is a very important result because any measure that you want to take to reduce the impact of livestock farming on methane emissions must start from the premise that the end product, in this case curd, is not affected by any dietary changes introduced. So, what did we see with dairy cows? Similar to that done with sheep, we formulated a concentrate for dairy cows. Concentrate was provided at the automatic milk milking system. What do we see? In this figure, you can see the methane emissions. We have observed a reduction in methane emissions with the concentrate form formulated with rapeseed compared with control. I will not get into details, but in this case, we did observe a modification of the fermentation pattern in the rumen. The diet based on cold pressed rapeseed cake seems to reduce the acidic to propionic ratio, which indicates a more efficient fermentation in terms of hydrogen production and by consequence in methane emissions. Looking at the productive uh, performance, as you can see, rapeseed resulted in a change in the composition of the milk by increasing the concentration of fat. This increase in the concentration of fat without impairing milk production may be interesting from a financial point of view. And it should, should also be taken into account that the concentrate, again, is much cheaper. Similar to that found for, for dairy sheep, these results suggest that the use of rapeseed could help reduce production costs while enabling farmers' revenues to increase. Moreover, 
feeding rapeseed re resulted in a decrease of, of milk urea concentration, which could mean a lower excretion of nitrogen in urine. This is an important issue, not only from the point of view of uh, livestock production, but also from an envi envi environmental point of view. We took a sample of the milk produced, uh, we had it pasteurized and offered, and offered it to a consumer panel. We, we must start from the premise that the end product, in this case milk, is not affected by any dietary changes introduced. Our surprise was huge when we, f when we found out that the consumers were able to distinguish with the, between the two milks. We moved them one step forward and asked them to tell us uh, the, uh, if they accepted the milk or not. As you can see in this figure, the end consumer appreciates the milk produced, not being able to detect any problems in terms of taste, appearance, or smell. So in conclusion, what, can we, what, what we can say is that moderate reductions of methane emissions can be achieved without impairing milk production, with healthier milk for human, for human consumption. In addition, the consumer accepts the final product produced, and last but not least, the concentrate is much cheaper. So why not formulate cold press rapeseed cake? Thanks a lot for your attention, and uh, I, I pass now to Pilar. Thanks a million, Aser. Well, well, I am waiting for some questions to come up. I would like to remind you that Acer's presentation has been recorded and it will be available to watch back on the EuroDairy YouTube channels along with other EuroDairy webinars. Okay, there doesn't seem to be much questions at the moment. Well, when they come up, I have some questions for you, Acer. Uh, I have seen that there have not been many changes on the milk yield for use. And dairy cows, did they like the animals? Did they accept? this ratio well yeah this is one of the the question that uh, a farmer usually asks when you propose him to to, to change or to concentrate uh, you get to the concentrate you give to the cows and this was a, a measure we actually did, did. Uh, we measure concentrate intake individually by each each cow and, and sheep and uh, I, I have to say that the, the refusals were as uh, as much as the as those found for for the, the conventional concentrate. And here it is in I'd, I'd like to say that uh, with the received the the proposed proportion of uh, rapeseed cake in the in the concentrate was was 40 percent. So again, if uh, a sheep eat in a concentrate. Whose concentration or whose uh, and the proportion of rapeseed cake in the concentrate is 40 percent, and that sheep does does not reject the the concentrate. The cow that uh, ate uh, a much uh, lower inclusion of rapeseed in the concentrate, that cow would reject it uh, much less. Okay, thank you very much. Now, there are some questions coming up. Then the first one is, uh, well, let's see. Would a large feed meal be able to purchase? No. To purchase quantity on forward contracts? Uh, in this project, we have two, two meals. One big meal, uh, it is the one that uh, you've seen in the picture, and, and a portable one, uh, the one I said that you can stick it in a, in a, in a car and take it away. The, I agree that uh, the big meal uh, would uh, help the, the, the rapeseed cake to go to the, to, the, to the market because the concentrate uh, factories uh, would have that product available but the 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 objective of the of the project was that it was the the farmer himself himself who would uh, make uh, this kind of uh, 
or who, who could use this kind of products on 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 his his animals. Uh, another reason to to stay this way, uh, which means in a producing cakes on farm instead of in a, in a centralized centralized uh, factory is that uh, by doing uh, doing it on the farm you would not have to face uh, problems with using arable land, lands to obtain uh, biofuels or or feeds for for animals okay 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 very good then another question we have coming here is is cold pressed grapes it available in the market in quantity we are now facing that uh, that problem here in our in our region when you go to the uh, concentrate uh, factories and you explain the results they are they are really interested in the in the product you, you know it is uh, uh, this product has an, an important amount of fat and, and protein. Uh, you can use it, use it for the organic production. Uh, you don't have very, very, very many problems. And then you can go to the uh, producers, to the rapeseed producers, and again you can tell them the, the story, and they, they say, "Oh, it, it is really interesting." But one, uh, the concentrate uh, factory is waiting for the producers to produce it in large scale. And again, the the, the, the rapes the producers are waiting for the concentrate factory to offer them some contracts. So here we are. Yes, I see it's a, a long way. <laughs> another problem that has to be faced or solved before. Then another question we have from another assistant. Is about the composition of the ratio. Could you tell us a little more about the ratio to cows? How was it formulated? Can you tell us about the, the ratio composition? Yeah. More in detail. Uh, the concentrate uh, of the dairy cows, in that concentrate, uh, the inclusion level of rapeseed cake was 20%. In dairy sheep, it was 40%. Uh, the concentrates were formulated to provide equal amounts of protein, and this was, well, uh, I'm saying by heart, but I think it was 19-18% uh, and fat of that concentrate was 5%. 5%. The forage we fed the, the cows, uh, take into account that it is an um, it is a, a, we were using an automatic mil milking system, therefore we, we, you can do a total mix ration, so the concentrate was offered in the, in the automatic mil milking system, and then cows were offered a forage uh, or a ration that included uh, straw, al alfalfa hay, uh, grass silage, uh, that was pretty much it. Okay, thank you, Asher. Then there is another question about the rapeseed uh, as a crop. How how easy is it? <laughs> okay. The, okay, that's a, the tricky question. That's the key uh, to this uh, success. The rapeseed uh, it, it has a problem, which is a germ germination. As long as you can uh, see or find a, a good germination, then uh, rapeseed is a, a profitable uh, crop. You will have no problem. But once uh, you have a problem and you have to, re re for instance, reseed in in the in the spring, then it is not a profitable uh, uh, crop. Again, the main problem is your, your germination. It, it is normally here in northern Spain. You see it in, sep in September, by mid-September, and if it doesn't rain uh, by December, the, the crop will not reach 
an optimal phenological state and will suffer from, from freezing. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, there is another question related to the practical adaptation of this of this strategy. Have the results been taken into use on farms in this region? Yes, uh, there are farmers uh, that are using these uh, these products uh, right now. There are uh, these products are being used for for finishing cattle, for dairy dairy cows, dairy sheep, and even the the oil for 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 pigs. Okay. Well, well uh, are the farmers uh, mm, convinced to change their equipment, their machinery equipment, or <laughs> if we are talking about the tractors, uh, <laughs> the the to tell the truth, they are not not quite. But uh, it is uh, much easier to use this uh, biofuel with heaters, okay? With uh, with the heating system of uh, of the house or um, the the cheese factory, and there uh, there are some some uh, producers that 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 are using it. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, another question is, is if ripseed cake is better than pumpkin cakes? Well, uh, to, to tell you the truth, I'm not very familiar with uh, pumping, pump, pumping, pumpkin cakes. Uh, what, what I can say is that pumpkin uh, has a, a very interesting, or the oil of the seeds of the pumpkin, pumpkin uh, has a very interesting uh, fatty acid profile, and no doubt that it is that it that it would be would be very interesting. Uh, but to tell you the truth, I I cannot tell you whether it is more more or less interesting than 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 using uh, rape, rape, rape seed. Okay, thank you, I said. Well, we have covered much a bit deal of the questions that have been presented up to now. Maybe you can tell us, as I said, how is your your next step in this idea of knowledge? I mean, uh, <laughs> are, you, are you still continuing on this line of work you have been you have started about the rape seed? That, as we have seen, there are interesting results, and maybe the, there is a long way to work now in the transference. I see you have met a lot of transfer transference to the sector, but maybe there are at research level or interesting in in this case the, there is a, a research going on and it is done by 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 a colleague by Nerea Mandaluniv who right now is uh, using uh, rape seed cake with with uh, their use in this case is with their use to produce uh, curds and yogurts uh, that can be labeled as uh, as a source of omega-3 uh, uh, feed or food in in this case. So yeah, we are we are still uh, doing research uh, in this in this in this area, mm -hmm. and I and this re re research is 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 done uh, with with uh, profession professional uh, pro 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 producers. Mm -hmm. Okay, very interesting. Yes, we have another question now. How do you measure methane? <laughs> Good question. Output of the cows? 
Yeah. In this, uh, that's uh, another good question. <laughs> In this uh, research, we estimated the, the methane pro production uh, using uh, uh, the, the milk fatty acid composition of milk. But n right now, uh, we have uh, two, two sensors that can allow us, uh, that allow us to to measure it di di directly. We have a laser diode and a, and a sniffer product that, that both of them uh, can tell us the, the concentration of, uh, of methane in, in the eructation of the cow. Okay, are these equipment uh, available to use in these farmers with, to make demonstrations and, yes? Like I said, there are, we have uh, two, two apparatus. One of them is a, a laser, which is manual, mm -hmm. okay? But the other one, the, the sniffer, uh, you can stick it in, a, in the automatic milking system so it is a, it is really it, it measures uh, missing continuously and, uh, and yeah we are we are we are doing uh, uh, that that uh, effort uh, right 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 now okay that's very interesting mm -hmm. well We can. We have time for for some more questions to come up if they appear. Do you know if in other in other regions or countries these kind of studies have been taken? Is just in all conditions that you have, right? This idea of uh, using cold press the uh, rapeseed rap cakes, you can use uh, rapeseed, well, oil seed cakes, you can use uh, rapeseed or sunflower linseed. Mm -hmm. There are, uh, I, I know that in France, uh, in the southern part of France, they, 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 are, they are on it, they, they are, okay. yeah, they are working on it. And, and in Italy, uh, in, in Italy, in Italy, yeah, I, yeah, they are, they are they are using the the oil uh, in this case not blended with diesel but they are using the 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 oil as bio biofuel biofuel. Mm -hmm. I imagine it also depends on the available land that the farmer has to to produce its own rapeseed and yes. Mm -hmm. then, Okay, there's another question. Is the cold press rapeseed cake easy to store? And how long, long does it keep? That, that's another good question. Uh, when we started, uh, when we started the project, we did ourselves another uh, previous question, which was. Uh, what is more interesting to store the seed or to store the, the oil? Take into account that uh, that rape seed is harvest, harvested in in July and you have uh, two thousand or three thousand kilograms per hectare if if everything is okay. So you have a lot of seeds and you have a, a much lower requi re requirement of either oil or uh, the cake. So the question here was was clear. We did some uh, analysis and trials, and we we found out, to my surprise, uh, if I if I if I can say, that it it was much better to store the 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 the, uh, the oil than 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 the seed because the the properties of of the oil degraded much faster in in seed in the seed than uh, stored as oil. So 
being said that with with uh, with the with with the with the with the question now i can tell you our our experience uh, i've been feeding uh, the the cake uh, and that cake was uh, i can tell you that five six months uh, or the time spent between pressing and using was five to six months and no no particular problems uh, no molds uh, as long as you can as long as long as you store it properly eh? no molds no problems uh, no problem at all it, it is a it is quite quite dry, uh, 85 percent dry 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 matter, and uh, not not very not very many many problems. Okay, and the idea I said is that the farmer presses it himself. In a, how long can it take? In a, <laughs> I mean. Depends on the size of the meal. It can it can take him one day. Yeah. Once after the harvest, how long does he? Yes. Depen that depends on the on the meal. Uh, our our meals and, and the portable one eh, mm -hmm. as, as as well. Uh, you can press forty kilograms per hour. Mm -hmm. So that that's really what it takes you to. To do the the person. Hmm? I imagine that for the farmer to get the rice seed and the the cake and the oil at the at the same time, is he needs quite a quite help or no? Is it no? Okay. <laughs> like uh, like I said in the during the dissertation, the idea of the project is to stay simple. If we, we we uh, we we had clear clear that if we wanted this uh, project to su su succeed, we had to stay simple. If you begin to complicate things, then uh, the farmer would normally uh, would say that he's he's not interested. So the 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 indeed the, the, the machinery re required for to do the mill in your in your in your house. It is it is very very simple very very simple no problem at all. It it is just what if what you can see on the picture at the beginning of the of the of the presentation. Mm -hmm. There is one question about economic aspects. What is the cost of the ref seed cake in comparison to other concentrates? That's another well, another another interesting question. Uh, during the, the dissertation, I said that the, uh, we also tried to de develop a network of uh, producers interested in in uh, uh, using rapeseed uh, as the first crop in the rotation with cereal. Uh, when we did that, uh, we worked with uh, ten farmers, and with these farmers. We recorded absolutely every all the supplies they require to produce uh, one ton of seed. What I mean is uh, the fertilizers, the guy, the diesel, the time is spent uh, doing some, any kind of labor, what machine, what machinery they used, um, everything, everything. So with that information, with that information we could really estimate the cost of producing uh, either the oil or the rapeseed cake. So when I gave the, the consent that when I said that the concentrate was 30% 30, 30 cheaper, I, I used all that information uh, that we gather in, in that uh, action. Right now, by heart, I can tell you that the rapeseed cake uh, cost, it is the cost, what cost us, uh, it was uh, 200 euros per ton, more or less, at that time. Mm -hmm. 
good. Thank you. And there's another question that's quite detailed. Uh, let's see. Is they ask about the winter minimum temperature for the ale to be stored when it was included at 10%. Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, this uh, demonstration uh, activity uh, took place in uh, Vitoria Gasteiz, which is in, in northern Spain, but it, it is not, uh, let's say, close to the, to the sea, uh, like Bilbao would be. It is a, a con, 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 continental uh, Mediterranean uh, climate. So, uh, in the winter, we had to face, uh, I would say, rather low temperatures. Uh, mm, I can't tell you the I can't tell you the the mean, but I can I can I, I can really tell you that when we were doing that uh, that demonstrative demonstrative action, there were days in which the temperature was below zero. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, there are quite extreme temperatures in, in this region of Spain. Mm -hmm. Well, we are quite well on time. I, in relation to the questions that have been posed, many questions. I think it has been a very interesting topic, yes, because of the possibility of transference to the farmer and of the feeding saving that is one of the <laughs> interesting aspects for them. Well, if there are no more questions, we are approaching to the end of the of this webinar. Then a big thank you a big thank you to all of you for listening. We had a great turnout and participation in this webinar. Please keep an eye out on the EuroDairy website for future webinars and a very special thanks to Acer for taking time out of his busy day. The recording of this webinar will be available to watch back on EuroDairy website in due course as it has been mentioned before. Thank you very much.